possible 37 people dead, 5 bodies, 4 cryptograms, numerous headlines, countless police scratching their heads, but no prosecutions. Will the mystery of the Zodiac Killer ever be solved? Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that sometimes tries its hand at solving the odd mystery. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, and today I'm asking, who was the Zodiac Killer? Before we get into this nitty gritty video, I would like to ask you guys to hit that thumbs up button and also leave me a comment in the comment section down below letting me know who you think the Zodiac Killer was. Okay, so it's been 50 years since the Zodiac Killer began their murdering spree, and half a century later, police have not been able to figure out who is behind the grisly deaths. I don't presume that in 5 minutes I'm going to be able to do what detectives have failed to do for 5 decades, but let's give it a good ponder shall we? The Zodiac Killer terrorised Northern California and claimed to have killed 37 people, although there were 5 confirmed victims and 2 survivors. These survivors were able to describe their attacker. One of them, Michael Mago, claimed that the attacker was a white male between 26 to 30 years old and around 200 pounds standing at around 5 foot 8, so quite a largely built man. He also described the killer as being white and having short light brown curly hair. Similarly, survivor Brian Hartnell also said his attacker was 5'11", so slightly taller, and more than 170 pounds with brown greasy hair and glasses. On several occasions, police received communications from the killer or persons claiming to be the killer in the form of a phone call or letters sent to local news outlets. They have DNA and fingerprints on file as well as eyewitness accounts, so why? Why has the killer never been found? Good question. Let's talk about about the most likely contenders. Back in the 1960s, Arthur Lee Allen was the prime suspect, as a result of the murder of Sherry Jo Bates. Allen's former friend John Cheney reportedly said that his friend had expressed a desire to kill and had previously referred to himself as a Zodiac. Indeed, a Zodiac watch was found in his house. It seems he even had a typewriter like the one used in a murder confession, and one of the survivors identified Allen in a lineup. Police made Alan take handwriting tests. In the end, they didn't match up to the Zodiacs, nor did his DNA and fingerprints. Alan was later found dead in his California home. Also up for debate is Richard Gikoswoski, a crime writer, pro-violence and anti-police writer from San Francisco. Gikoswoski wrote for the Good Times newspaper under the name Geik. The paper published a lot of material about the Zodiac Killer, and one of the killer's ciphers clearly had Geik written on it. Unfortunately, by the time the police turned to him, they couldn't get a search warrant or his fingerprints. Weirdly, in 2013, people started believing that politician and attorney Ted Cruz was the Zodiac Killer, which was very, very strange. Apparently, 10% of the Florida electorate thought it was him, even though he was born two years after the killings began. Other names brandished around have been ham radio enthusiast Rick Marshall, Bruce Davis, Gareth Penn, but again, police have never found any evidence. Earl Van Best Jr. is the the closest visual match to the infamous sketch of the Zodiac Killer, and his son wrote a book claiming his biological dad was indeed the murderer. His son Gary L. Stewart claims that EV, Best, and Junior can be found in cipher codes, and his father's signature matches the handwriting in the Zodiac's letters. Police aren't taking it so seriously, but Stewart continues to fight for the link to be made, and is working with forensic experts to analyse his father's DNA. While identifying the Zodiac Killer may seem hopeless, with so many potentials, luckily all is not quite lost. As time moves on, yes we are less likely to find the killer alive, but we may be closer to finding answers as modern technology allows for a better analysis of evidence. Recently, using updated DNA profiling, Joseph D'Angelo was named as a suspect in the Golden State Killer case. Until recently, the case of the 1970s and 80s murders was closed, but now the suspect has been charged with all 12 murders in the case. Last week on K PIX news channel, it was announced that new DNA studying technologies may help find the Zodiac Killer. Dr. Monty Miller, a forensic DNA expert, has said that the usefulness of the existing evidence depends on how well it was stored, how well it was sealed, was it placed out of sunlight? It may still be good to work with if it was. However, if it was kept in a box in a warehouse, then it may be useless. So guys, there we have it. We still have no idea who the Zodiac Killer is. All 
All we know is that he was a white male of medium to large build with glasses, which doesn't really narrow it down. He could also very well be dead by now. Could it be possible that he slipped through the net and got away with it? Or did he change tactic and get arrested for a different set of murders? We may never know, but hopefully furthering forensic technologies will help us out. Who do you guys think the Zodiac Killer was? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, do make sure you leave a thumbs up if you like our videos. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, stay curious, stay alert and never ever stop questioning.